This is crazy. How is that possible? Yeah, mine doesn't do that. What the hell? So modern day 3D printers are getting crazy fast. People are really pushing the boundaries of these things. And I don't have one of these things. And my printer is really slow, relatively speaking. I, when I bought it, I knew it was gonna be slow and take a while to make a print. And I still am just kind of used to it. But after seeing all these videos of these printers, I really got to thinking. How fast could I get this guy going? My old 3D printer. And so my old 3D printer is a Lulzbot Kit Taz, which is basically a Taz 4 model that came in a kit form to save almost $1,000 at the time of purchase. And it didn't come with a screen, which I added on shortly thereafter. Besides that, this thing is pretty much stock as delivered, except for adding this uh, new print bed with the spring sheet and PEI textured on it. I built this thing in October, 2014, and it is still brutally just reliable. I mean, yeah, there's the occasional clog, which isn't too hard to clear up, but it's been a really good printer. So this thing doesn't have any nice features that are basically standard nowadays, like automatic bed leveling. This was a few years before that really started to kind of come into play. It also uses 2.85 millimeter filament instead of the 175, which is so standard nowadays. At the time, it was almost a 50-50 split as to what printer was using what size filament. And so one of the obvious advantages of having the 175 millimeter filament instead of the 285 is that it heats up a lot quicker because the heat doesn't have to pass through so much material to melt. Which is where some of these speed advantages can come nowadays because you can melt the filament quicker. I can't do that. So what can I do? Well, beyond replacing the printer or replacing all the motors and things like that and the firmware and drivers and everything, basically getting a new printer, I got kind of curious to see if the print orientation makes a difference in how fast it can go. My thought being that acceleration is essentially a function of force and mass, the motors will put out a certain amount of torque to move the hot end or the print bed around. Now, depending on which one is lighter, one might be faster than the other, or, or at least hit the higher speeds faster than the other. So basically, can the printer move the hot end faster than the print bed? Which one would be faster? And then also, with a combination of, two move, of the two moving together, would that be even faster still? My thought would be yes, but let's find out. So after getting my theory down, I needed something to test it with, and I just wanted a basic print that can really hopefully push the printer to its max. So I just created this basic shape. It's essentially just a really long slot. So I got this into Cura. So for this test, I got the model in, and I load it up in X, and I rotate in Y, and then in X and Y. I set the speeds to 500 from 60. Uh, 60 to 70 is typically where I'm at with my printer. And then I go and basically create this vase mode. So it's just one, one layer. Spiralize, outer contour, click on preview. Of course, it has the base, which I don't want. I set bottom layers to zero. And what that should do is get rid of the middle portion because I don't want the print head to go back and forth to fill in that bottom because that's gonna screw up my results. I want it as much as possible in just one direction back and forth as I can. So I have long straight edges and then a smooth transition to go back. And then after I do that, I save it and then repeat the process for Y, rotate in 90 degrees, re-slice, and then at 45 degrees, for X and Y and re-slice. And now let's see what we can do. So after doing six rounds of testing, I came up with these. Now clearly I was going way too fast for the hot end to keep up. It actually dropped almost 40 degrees at this speed just because it couldn't maintain the temperature. The filament was cooling it off too quickly, which is why the print quality is so terrible on these at the end.
So after running six tests, uh, two in each orientation, two in X, two in Y, and two in X and Y at different accelerations. Yes, this is 900 millimeters per second, 1500 millimeters per second, which is nothing compared to what the new printers can do, which are crazy fast accelerations, 10 times this. But I digress. So I did 900 and 1500 in each print orientation to see what the speeds would be like. And the results are in. Can you guess which one is which? That's right, the x direction, which is moving the print head, is the slowest. y, which is moving the print bed, is in the middle. And the combination of the two, using both motors in x and y, is clearly the fastest. I was actually a bit surprised that X was slower than Y. I was thinking the print head might be a little bit lighter than the print bed, but I suppose moving that stepper motor around is probably a pretty heavy object to move. And obviously using higher accelerations, you have a lower print time as you are able to get to the high speed faster. And so what do these results tell us? Well, changing nothing in the slicer, the speeds are the same, temperatures are the same, everything is the same, the object is the same, the only difference is the print orientation. You can get a potentially 17% increase in speed by going from a predominantly X-oriented part to printing in X and Y at a 45 degree angle. And so what does this really mean? Well, if you have a five hour long print in X, then you can potentially reduce 30 minutes off that print time by doing basically nothing. It's a free increase in speed in the real world. So what are some of the takeaways from this little experiment? Well, one is obviously acceleration helps you get to the top speed faster. So if you have a higher acceleration rate, you're gonna to get to that speed faster. That's not surprising. But if you have two motors to effectively move the hot end or the hot end relative to the part you're printing, then that's obviously going to help you out in this case. And on a Cartesian based printer, like a typical bed slinger or a Cartesian based printer where the print bed itself does not move, but it's essentially a gantry that moves in X and Y itself, not a core XY, but Cartesian based, then you really want to focus on printing as much in X and Y at 45 degrees as possible because you'll get the highest speeds out of it. If you are on a Core XY machine, I would imagine that the opposite orientation would be true because on a Core XY machine, one motor by itself, only by itself, is moving X and Y. But to move in, say, just X, you're using both motors on a Core XY machine. So basically the opposite orientation from a Cartesian is what you would want to use on a Core XY. I don't have a Core XY machine to test this out, but maybe you do and you can kind of test this out for yourself and add to the community knowledge. So what can you really actually do about this? Well, the model itself, you might not be able to change the shape. Say you're, you're creating a figurine and really it's a bunch of curvy lines, so the orientation is not gonna make a big difference. But what will make a difference is the orientation of your infill. And that you can control, and, and that is where a lot of your time printing is going to go to. So, for example, in Cura, the standard orientation is for the infill to be X and Y, as we can see here. So on a Cartesian-based platform, you want to make sure that your infill is at 45 degrees because that's where a lot of your print time is going to go, is to your infill. And so that's the default setting for Cura, like if you're doing lines, for example. So it's essentially at a 45 degree angle. So in my theory, if you have a core XY machine, what you want to do is make sure that your infill is printing perpendicularly to the print bed and not at a 45 degrees. So in Cura, which is what I typically use, you want to put your infill line directions to 0, 90. And that way you can get this grid pattern like that. So one quick way to make sure you're getting the fastest print speed is make sure that with your printer, the infill orientation and as much as you can, the model itself, be at whatever type printer you have. If it's Cartesian, have it be a for, as much at a 45 degree angle as you can. If you have a Core XY, my theory, 
have as much in either X or Y, but not X and Y as much as you can. And I think that way you can probably get the highest speed out of your printer as much as you can. All right, so this was kind of an interesting experiment, I thought, of how you can kind of get the most out of your machine that you currently have uh, without doing anything except for changing the orientation that you're printing the model. You know, there's no tuning or tweaking to the printer needed, just changing if you're printing from here to here, and especially your infill settings are really important uh, to match with the type of printer that you have, you can actually get probably a little bit more speed out of your prints. So I hope you kind of enjoyed going down this road with me and hopefully you can apply it to your own world. So anyways, if you did like this video and want to see more things of it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and let me know what your thoughts about this little experiment are. Could I have done it better? If you have a Core XY, I would love to hear from you if you have the same results that I see with the Cartesian or is my theory correct about Core XY machines being basically the opposite of what you want to have. When I do see a lot of those speed runs, they are going in X or Y uh, when they're doing those quick, quick moves and not necessarily in X and Y, but it will be interesting to see how the difference actually plays out. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you do all the YouTube things and I will see you in the next video. Bye.